Hello and welcome my friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you guys so very much for spending some time with me today and watching this video. This is going to be my group reading in celebration of Hobbit's Day. On September 22nd, the amazing and infamous Bilbo Baggins and Frodo Baggins celebrate their birthdays. These iconic and beloved characters are immortalized in multiple novels written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Plus, we have those iconic movies. These characters have inspired us. These little people who, well, despite their size, took on the impossible. And that's what I want to celebrate today. Yes, we want to pay homage and appreciation to these amazing characters and all that they've given us. But I want to look at that big adventure. I want to look at how, even though we are just one person, how we can make such a big impact on our world, our community, and ourselves. So last year I created this spread to, well, highlight that adventure. And as time goes on and those adventures change, it's time to revisit this amazing spread. Now like always, I will have a link below to this spread so that you can revisit it as often as you need and whenever you need. The deck, well, I had to go with the Lord of the Rings. I have no idea where I got it. I think someone gave it to me years ago. I don't use it very often. And this spread, well, it screams this deck. And like always, I will put a link below. So if you too are a Lord of the Rings fans and need this deck, you can go check it out for yourselves. The selections I have for this fun, and insightful reading. I, of course, went with Angelite, Rose Quartz, and then the Moonstone. I want you to look at these crystals and pick whichever one resonates with you the most right now, and then head into that description box below. You'll find timestamps there. I want you to click on that correlating timestamp, which will take you straight to your reading and I will see you there, my hobbitses. Hello and welcome, my angelite friends. This reading is especially for you. Now, like always, I have the full tarot deck here, so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what these amazing hobbits want to share with my angelite friends. So of course, we're gonna start off on question one. What next adventure awaits my angelite friends? Ace of Cups. Galadriel's mirror shows many things, but wisdom lies in understanding what is shown. One of the reasons I don't use this deck very often is that it kind of loses its meaning in the, the tale and in the characters, well, they're iconic, right? In the books and the movies. I find that really it's only this spread that I can use this deck for because it does reference the book so very much. However, in this reading, that's exactly what we need. That next big adventure, my angelite friends, we're looking at that connection for understanding and guidance, those intuitional skills that we all have. 
that next big adventure, my friends, we're looking up. That next big adventure, my friends, we're looking at working on and strengthening our ability to receive the guidance and wisdom that we need. Working with those messages, working with those high vibrational beings, our support system, so that we have a better understanding of what we should be doing and well, some of the easier routes that we can take. Many of us are struggling with this scenic route and how challenging things have become. So taking that road that may be more traveled and has less stumbles can be really appreciated right now. Let's go on to question two. What is the biggest challenge for this adventure? The Eight of Coins. The skilled healers work assiduously on Faramir's injured body. The Eight of Coins, or that Eight of Pentacles. We're looking at that finer detail. And it's in that attention to detail that we're going to find those stumbles. Because it is in those past pains, those past injuries, that cause us heartache and fear. That is going to be our biggest challenge things that have scared us, things that were threatened to us. They impact our ability to use our clairs, to connect in, and in some cases, to truly see what's right in front of us. If we turn that blind eye, we're missing the, the picture, the message, and we don't have to address that pain and that fear. Our ego is going to try and stop us at every turn. We need to have that perseverance and, well, that determination to have that battle of wills. So let's go into question three. How do my angelite friends take their first steps forward? <laughs> the High Priestess, of course. Lady Eowyn is guided by her intuition. Even though I don't use this deck very often, when you are a reader and you have that connection in with cards, you can read anything and the cards are very clear. It's a second nature, if you will. So, yes, how we go forward is embracing the High Priestess and, of course, the beautiful Lady Eowyn. She is ready to fight, to take that challenge on. And, like I said, it's going to be a battle of wills. We have that ability to work past and heal those pains, those fears. We have to trust in ourselves, trust in our abilities, and of course, trust in that high vibrational support team. This is a time where we can start to work on that healing for our greater good. We can start to recover some of what has been lost, and in some cases, some of what has been taken from us. When you take that time, you work on those amazing intuitive abilities. You start to rekindle and start to use those clairs. It's kind of like riding a bike. We're going to stumble and fall, but the more we persevere, 
the more that muscle memory comes into play and we can get going because we remember how to use them. There is a meditation that I did last week with Archangel Raziel where we worked on that connection and one of the big pieces was working on those blocks, healing and releasing what was standing in our way. Be a fantastic meditation for you guys to visit or revisit, especially on the 22nd, as this is really what this Hobbit energy, this energy of perseverance and drive, doesn't matter how little you are, you can overcome the biggest challenges. And that's what we're looking at, that courageous energy. And that's what we need right now. And that courage is going to help us heal and help us move forward. On to four. What will the end result be from this adventure? The Queen of Wands. Theodwin, sister of Theoden, is deep in thought about what the future may hold for her children, Eowyn and Oomir. The Queen of Wands, looking at that passion, that courage, that determination, that creativity. The more we're able to connect into this intuitive, energy, gaining the guidance we need, the more we're going to inspire that creative passion center within ourselves. We have amazing intuitive connections here that connects us and brings us closer to our intuitive creativity. We're now combining it with that passion center creativity. It gives us the yin and the yang to our creativity. We will be able to express ourselves more fully, gaining more abundances and fulfillment in what we're trying to do. We'll have a better understanding of these dots and how to connect them and how to really make it our own. Connecting these passions and allowing them to burn bright and light the way forward. We need that yin and yang to help bring in that balance, that centeredness, and that inspiration that will drive us forward. Let's go on to the final question. What awaits my angelite friends when they return home from their adventure? the Six of Cups. Pippin and Mary relax and joke after the fall of Theranach. That reminiscing, that connection, that understanding. When we're able to reflect, we're able to take that pause. We're able to see where that passion, that intuition is going to take us and what skills and abilities we can sharpen and what skills and abilities we need to reform for our greater good. We'll have that time of pause and most importantly that rejuvenation that's going to help well, get us ready for what is to come. I want to thank you guys so very much for spending time with me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful 
and you're able to gain some insight and guidance from those amazing hobbits. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As you can see here, you never know where I'm going to go next and there is so much more coming your way. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. And I know lots of people have them. And yes, I've got perks and tears. And my perks? Well, you're looking at free readings and healings. On top of that, I also have a Patreon exclusive library of videos. I really enjoy supporting those who support me. I've provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my angelite friends. Hello and welcome my Rose Quartz friends. This reading is especially for you. Now like always, I have the full tarot deck here so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the hobbits want to share with my Rose Quartz friends. So of course we're going to start off on question one. What next adventure awaits whoo, <laughs> my Rose Quartz friends? The Knight of Cups. Frodo, though injured, resists the call of the riders. They are then swept away. Knights, of course, we're looking at that adolescent no fear energy, which really does sum up Frodo a lot, doesn't it? I love how this deck really speaks to this spread. It's unfortunate that I can't use this deck in well, much else. It has too much of a reference to the story and the characters, and it doesn't have that same connection and that same meaning. And you find those deck-specific readings. So for this next big adventure, my Rose Quartz friends, we're looking at going forward using that intuitive skill, those intuitive abilities, understanding that there are going to be people and things that push and pull us. We need to stay steadfast to that intuitive energy. 2020 has really rocked and rolled us. The more we listen to that intuition, that guidance, that support, and counsel of the high vibrational beings, we're more able to overcome those challenges. Things get swept away. We can't back down. This next big adventure, we're looking at that continuation of pushing ourselves forward no matter what. We need to keep going, keep using those skills, relying on that support system, so that we are able to huh, defeat and overcome what life, 2020, and whatever life has to throw at us. This is our adventure and we need to stand up and we need to have that courage and that determination that's gonna take us forward. Let's go on to question two. What is my Rose Quartz friend's biggest challenge for this adventure? The Two of Swords. The members of Eldron's Council think deeply about the problem before them. 
And it's that uncertainty and that decision that's going to be the biggest challenge. How do we go forward? How do we conquer that challenge? We get stuck in ruminating thoughts and our limited knowledge. We need to step back, take that deep breath in, and connect into the intuitive support team. We were never meant to do this alone. We need to heed their advice, their counsel. They're going to have that best direction forward. They're going to make this journey as most fulfilling and, well, with as few major challenges as possible. The more we connect in with them, the more we understand and have a clearer picture of where it is we need to go. And when we're on that right track, that's when we start to receive additional supports that help us along the way. All right, let's go on to question three. Okay, let's head on to question three. How do my Rose Quartz friends take their first steps forward? The Nine of Swords. The Nine Riders know nothing except the will of their Dark Lord. It's kind of ominous, but a little bit true here. The Nine of Swords, we're looking at that depression and anxiety. We can be very blindsided and taken aback by sudden dips and shifts in our lives, events and situations. And then that pesky ego coming forward and really driving home some of those swords that bring in that heartache, drive deep into that fear, causing that stagnation. And all we know is that darkness. We need to take that deep breath. Nines are about all that we've overcome, all that we've achieved. We have that knowledge on how to do this. We need to calm our mind. We need to make those decisions with the guidance of those high vibrational beings for our greater good, to get out of the darkness, to embrace that light that's going to help bring in that fulfillment, that joy, and that happiness. You can't have fulfillment and joy when you're stuck in that darkness. Joy and fulfillment don't lurk there. Sadness and fear do. So our first steps is going to be coming out of that darkness. Frodo heard the call of the riders and he resisted. He persevered. And that's what we need to do now. We need to persevere. Use that intuitive energy to gain that guidance, that support, and embrace that light and that love. On to question four. What will the end result be from this adventure? The Empress, Belladonna Took, Gadriel, and Rose Gamji amplify the three aspects of the feminine power. The Empress, we're looking at that fertility, that abundance, and that growth. We're getting out of that darkness and getting into that light. We're getting things moving. 
in a way that brings in that abundance. We're no longer dreading our day. We get up and we're excited to see what further growth, what further abundances your day is going to hold for you. You're excited to participate and be that active participant that is challenging and taking on some of those more momentous tasks. When you are embracing that light, when you're getting out of that stuckness and you're being guided by that amazing support team, there's a little that can stop you. Your ego may try to redirect you and remind you of things. However, when you have that courage, that determination, and that knowledge of how to outwit and outbattle your ego, you're going to find that your life has more meaning that that abundance rolls in and you're able to manifest everything and all that you need. Your vibration rises and things start to fall into place. Those dots become clearer and more connected. Let's go on to the final question. What awaits my Rose Quartz friends when they return home from their adventure? The Hierophant, Sauron counsels dark and secret forces. The Palomir has given him a vision of his own future glory. So the Hierophant, obviously being the fifth card in the Major Arcana, it's usually a bit of a challenging number. We're not going to have to worry about dealing with Sauron and the darkness when we get home. Rather, this is a different meaning, a more traditional meaning of the Hierophant. The Hierophant is a gatekeeper. The traditional and original card that Pamela Coleman Smith drew, you have a Pope-like figure in between two pillars, depicting him as that gatekeeper. And this is very much what we're going to see when we get home. When we return from this dark place and we're able to move forward, we're going to have that rite of passage. As we raise that vibration and get out of that stuckness, opportunities and well, possibilities start to open up. Like I said, that abundance starts to come forward. The Hierophant also is known as the Keeper of Keys. The original card, right in the foreground there, right at the bottom, you see these crossing keys. And it's with these keys that those opportunities, those possibilities are open. Our vibration is high enough to be granted access to these opportunities. At present moment, our vibration is nowhere near high enough. We're too much of a bystander to embrace and understand what the Hierophant is willing to unlock should that vibration rise. Should we embrace ourselves, stand in our power, and raise that vibration being that active participant? We are the ones in control and we need to make this life more meaningful. It's up to us as it is our life and no one else's responsibility. I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and they're able to gain some insight and direction into what the hobbits want to share with you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
as you can see here, you never know where I'm going to go next. And there's so much more amazing coming your way. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. And I know lots of people have Patreon pages. And yes, I've got lots of tiers and perks. Of course, my perks were looking at readings and healings. However, I also have a Patreon exclusive library of videos. I really enjoy supporting those who support me. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Rose Quartz friends. Hello and welcome, my Moonstone friends. This reading is especially for you. Like always, I have the full tarot deck here, so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the hobbits want to share with my Moonstone friends. So we're going to start off on question one. What next adventure awaits my Moonstone friends? Judgment. Gandalf reveals to Frodo the nature of the forces around him. I really do enjoy this deck. It really helps me revisit that amazing story, those symbols, those archetypes, and of course that message. Unfortunately, this deck really is kind of, well, specific to this reading. It doesn't lend well to other readings. So it is nice to be able to use this deck. And I got it many years ago and I don't remember where I got it from. But this deck does really lend well to this reading. Judgment is the 20th card in the Major Arcana. And it talks about that message from that higher vibrational source that guidance, the wisdom of the universe. Our next big task, my friends, we're looking at connecting in, using those clairs, using your intuition to better understand that message, that guidance, and most importantly, how it applies to you and your journey. We need to take that time, we need to start to nurture and work on that connection, that understanding, and then, of course, implementing and acting on that information. It's up to us to get that ball rolling, and we need to keep it going. So let's go on to question two. What is my Moonstone friend's biggest challenge for this adventure? The Ace of Coins. Celeborn is on his throne. Decisions are made on material matters. And it's going to be that materialistic view, insight, and need that's going to get in the way. We're going to be driven by what we think will support us. Those material goods that we think we may need the latest, the greatest, those pieces and aspects that can make our life a little easier, however, may not be needed to be replaced. We're coming into a time of abundance. Um, with that abundance, sometimes we are misdirected by marketing and by those shiny pieces, those electronics, those things that look really fun however, have nothing to do with that bigger picture, have nothing to do with that fulfillment 
and give, well, little meaning to the world around us. We are going to be easily misdirected. There are many marketing campaigns that are going to be targeted at us and our ego is going to find this an amazing opportunity to misdirect us from what's really important. We need to keep the eye on the prize. Those impulse buys, those pieces and aspects that don't give us meaning may need to hold off. Next week, we can look at them. But right now, there's something we need to focus in on that's going to bring us that fulfillment, that understanding, and true abundance. Let's go into question three. How do my Moonstone friends take their first steps forward? The Eight of Cups. Gollum leads Frodo and Sam through the dead marshes on their way towards Mordor. And that's where we need to go. Now eights in tarot are about movement and manifestation. That cup, we're looking at that insight, that intuition and emotion, that inner journey. We need to go inwards. And like Frodo and Sam, they dreaded Mordor. Many of us fear and dread going inwards. We have to understand us and our abilities so that we are able to make those connections. We're able to rely on our natural skills and our natural abilities. It's going to be an essential step for us. Going inwards strengthens that relationship with our higher self, which is where we're going to receive those messages how we're going to be able to interpret them and then implement them into our everyday. Let's go on to question four. What will the end result be from this adventure? The Two of Swords. The members of Eldron's council think deeply about the problem before them. And it's that understanding and knowledge that's going to take us that next step forward that's going to be waiting for us. That understanding where we need to go, how best we should go, and of course what supports and which direction is going to be, well, less bumpy, less twisty and turny. This adventure helps us to really deepen those dots and helps us connect them even more than what we currently are. That understanding and that knowledge are those next pieces in your puzzle. And finally, what awaits my Moonstone friends when they return home from their adventures? The Page of Swords. Denethor talks to Pippin about his hopes and his dreams. Now, pages, we're looking at that very adolescent, enthusiastic, and somewhat naive energy. Kind of sums up Pippin in a, well, in a nutshell. Yet, Pippin was the one that showed some of the most courage throughout the entire journey, 
putting himself in harm's way, even though he was well, half the size of most of the individuals on the front line and in the fellowship. It's that inquisical, adventurous energy that awaits us. This isn't the end. This is that next step, that adventure. When you look at your life as a book with many chapters and many different adventures to be told, this is yet that next step. But more, there are more adventures to be had. That knowledge that we're going to bring forward, not only from that adventure, but how we're going to apply our past knowledge, incorporate it in to that next step and that next big adventure. We need that playful and quizzical energy to support us in trying to arrange and understand how we take this knowledge, that self-discovery, and incorporate it in to what holds in the next chapter. How we can make it even more our own, gaining a greater understanding, a greater fulfillment, and of course, amazing abundances. I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that you were able to gain some insight and direction into what the hobbits want to share with you. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As you can see here, you never know where I'm going to go next and there's so much more amazing coming your way. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. And I know a lot of people have them. And of course, I've got lots of tiers and perks. And yes, of course, the perks you're looking at readings and healings. Additionally, I also have a Patreon exclusive library of videos. I really enjoy supporting those who support me. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Moonstone friends.